everyone today i will discuss about the clumpage paralysis in the previous section i have discussed the brachial plexus and the urs paralysis in the urs paralysis the upper trunk of the brachial plexus is injured in the clumpage paralysis the site of injury is the lower trunk of the brachial plexus and cause of injury what is the cause of injury the abduction undue abduction of the arm as in clutching something with the hand after a fall from a height or in birth injury and the nerve root mainly involved are the t1 and the partially c8 the muscle paralyzed are the intrinsic muscles of the hand and the ulnar fracture of the wrist and the fingers the intrinsic muscle of the hand what it does it means that the origin and insertion of the muscles are within the territory of the hand that is the intrinsic muscle of the hand that is called the that is intrinsic muscles of the hand now this figure showing the claw hand what is claw hand there is the hyperextension at the mp joint the metacarpophalangeal joint and the flexion at the interphalangeal joint there is the hyperextension at the mp joint and the flexion at the interphalangeal joint that is called the claw hand and claw hand due to unopposed action of the long flexor and extensor of the fingers now the disability are the biceps jerk and supinator jerks are lost and complete claw hand and cutaneous anesthesia and the analgesia in a narrow zone along a long border ulnar border of the forearm have on the hand that is the cutaneous anesthesia and analgesia in a narrow zone along ulnar border of the forearm and hand next is horner syndrome if t1 is injured if the t1 is injured proximal to the white ramus communicans to the first thoracic sympathetic ganglia there is the meiosis the ptosis and hydrosis and anophthalmos and this is because of the injury to the sympathetic fibers to the head and neck that leave the spinal cord to the nerve t1 this figure showing the ts of the spinal cord the dorsal root ganglia and the two communicants that is the white ramus communicants and the gray ramus communicants the white ramus communicants and the gray ramus communicants that is the preganglionic fibers and the gray ramus communicants that is the post ganglionic fiber the white ramus the pre ganglionic and the gray ramus that is the post ganglionic fibers and there is the meiosis there is the constriction of the people what is meiosis constriction of the people due to paralysis of the levator palpebris superioris muscles and hydrosis that is inability to sweat and n of thalamus that is the sunken eye that is the posterior displacement of the eyeball within the orbit and loss of cilio spinal reflex what is this the pupil fails to dilate when the skin when the skin on the back of the neck is pinched that is the loss of cilio spinal reflex pupil fails to dilate when the skin on the back of the neck is pinched this is because of injury to the sympathetic fiber to the head and neck that leave the spinal cord to the nerve t1 to the nerve t1 there will be the vasomotor change the skin area with the sensory loss is warmer due to arteriolar dilatation and it is also drier due to absence of sweating as there is the loss of sympathetic activity that is the vasomotor change and trophic change the long standing cases of paralysis leads to dry and scaly skin dry and scaly skin and the nails crack easily with the atrophy of the pulp of the fingers that is the trophic changes the vasomotor changes land the these are this is all about the clumpage paralysis the please share subscribe and like my video thank you that is the clumpage paralysis the lower trunk of the brachial plexus is injured